Well, this is uh, January 3rd, 1994. It opens with Paul Bearer and Undertaker in the workshop. Still working on that double deep, double wide casket. Paul Bearer declares 1994 the year of the casket. That sucks. <laughs> That's a horrible year. And uh, Undertaker declares he has made his New Year's resolution. Yakazuna, may you rest in peace. You know, there's a lot of ways to mispronounce Yokozuna. His own manager says Yokozuma. I think Granny calls him that too, but Yakazuna doesn't enough credit. Undertaker called him that here. I believe that's what Chuck Norris always called him when they brought him in to be that special ref. Yakazuna, a great way to mispronounce Yokozuna. Then we get a clip from Wrestling Challenge, and this is clearly a tape show with lots of clips on it. Jim Cornette is interviewing Yakazuna and crew. Jim Cornette is claiming that he signed a contract but never agreed to a casket match. He's a conspiracy that was illegally put in there by uh, Mr. Uh, by uh, uh, Paul Bearer after he had signed. Of course, the real story is Jim Cornette's incompetent, and he didn't see this clause in there. But regardless, he's not scared of this big giant box. And then the interviewer is of all people, yeah, Stan Lane. Yeah, it sure is. What a coincidence. Yeah. Who has to say, do you mean the casket? And Yokozuna freaks out. And Cornette says, don't you say that word. He's trying to cover up that Yokozuna's not afraid of caskets. He just has a, a phobia of that kind of thing. So don't uh, don't ever say casket. And he actually whispered it into the microphone. Which Loudly. Made me, which made me, yeah, more like casket or whatever. Then he talks about those boxes you put people in when they go away. And I think that's going to happen at my funeral, I've decided. Here is the box that we put him in when he went away. Not a casket. I got to say that some people may not like stuff like this, but this is classic professional wrestling. You have an incompetent manager who did something stupid. Now he's trying to to do whatever he's doing. But in the meantime, he, the champion, is af he's afraid of the word casket. Yeah. And so the manager doesn't want you to say casket. But the fucking announcer keeps saying casket as loud as he can, which makes the champion shiver at the idea of a casket. It's campy, goofy, wacky bullshit, but it's real simple. And, uh, you know, if you're a fan of The Undertaker, you're all excited for this casket match. You think that Yokozuna's fucked. If you've never seen Stan Lane, he looks like a cross between Lex Luger and Peter Scolari from Bosom Buddies. <laughs> okay. He does. Just want to get that picture. That is a joke for people who left, watched a lot of TV in the 1980s, 80s, and nobody else. <laughs> but you're right. He absolutely does. So we go back to Raw. The new commentary team this week is Vince McMahon and Johnny Polo. He was good. He had some good lines. He had a lot of a lot of his delivery was just I'm going to say normal things or say things, but in a whiny, a nasal voice all the time. Followed up by Vic. Me. Vic! A lot of meh from Johnny Polo in this. But uh, he wants to remind us he beat Marty Jannetty last week. Tonight on the show, the Smoking Guns versus Bam Bam Bigelow and Bastion Booger. Shawn Michaels in action. God, this show. Jeff Jarrett in <laughs> I action. I just remembered that match. This fucking show was the most perverse, fucked up show ever on Raw up to this point. It would get worse later on. Much, much. Yeah. So uh, Vince then has a... A Freudian slip, I believe, when Yokozuna's music hits, and he starts to say, <laughs> "This is where it began." I mean, Ben. Yeah. Take a load, he says, <laughs> and he catches himself. Keep in mind, the show was taped; it's not live. No. Take a look at Yokozuna. He's a load. He is a load. That's what he said. He is a load. He's, he's a, a wrestle, wrestle load. load. Yeah, he's a wrestle load. So it's Yokozuna versus Dan Dubiel. Where to be? Let's talk about Raven. Let's talk about Johnny Polo here. Uh, if you want to come off as an annoying, unlikable heel character, just do rap lyrics in the whitest voice you can do. This will do it. This will do it for sure. He called Yokozuna dope. Yeah. Later, he called someone Vince fat. Vince like, what does that mean? Yeah. He said fat? They're dissing my homeboy, he, Polo says. And then he goes, Mr. Fuji has a keen oriental mind, very shrewd. Yes, boy. You thought he was good, huh? Well, you know, he uh, was annoying. He, was he played annoying. his oh, role yeah. well. Fair, he was fair. an annoying guy you wanted to see get punched. So I'm watching this, and the first part of it is it, it's a great squash match. And Yokozuna looks like 
a, a, an actual literal monster, like a kaiju. They jumped off the, the big screen here to kill this man. But it's nothing I haven't seen before. And then it's time for the finish. I see where it's going. I wrote down my notes. <sighs> Yoko wins with Bonsai Drop. And then I finished typing that, and then I sat back to watch. Now, they claimed Yokozuna was 600 pounds here. He was not 600 pounds. He's nah, way over yet. four. Not yet. He's, he may have been five, but he's a big, big, big man. And he goes to that middle rope. And usually when he does these, he jumps off, and he lands on his feet, and kind of sets his butt in the guy, but all his weight's on his own legs. He's very, mm-hmm. very, very, uh, very careful that way. Yokozuna goes to that middle rope, and for a 400-plus pound man, you would not believe how high he can jump. And he jumps way up in the air, and he comes down and does nothing to protect Dan Dubiel. <laughs> His big, giant ass comes down on Dubiel's torso. Dubiel screams in agony. And that's actually not the worst of it, because then Yoko just sits on him. The ref counts three. Yoko still won't move. Now, I know all, everyone here has seen my first match ever in a ring in front of a crowd with Stony Edwards. I've talked about this. Stoney was probably 250, but when he covered me in that match, he put his weight on my chest, he hooked my leg, and then he actually lifted his hips off the mat to put all his weight on my chest. I couldn't draw breath, and I was stuck and smothered. I'm watching Yokozuna, and I'm watching Dan Dubiel, and Yoko has crushed him, squeezed all the air out of him, and then won't move. Dubiel is frantically pleading to get him off so he can draw a breath and won't literally die. The ref is trying to pull Yoko off. Yoko finally moves. So apparently this is notorious and I'm like the only person who's like a life. I guess, dude. This is a very, very, very famous squishing. (sighs) And not only that, bro, before he squished the guy, he fucking booted him right in the face. Okay. Now Yokozuna had a a reputation for never 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 squishing anybody. Like he was a great worker. He'd never hurt you. You didn't feel a thing, but it looked great. This one, I don't know what happened. But man, like how in the God's name did this guy not die? I don't know. He fucking crushed him with all of his weight. Sat on him. You can see the jobber like talking to the ref, like I'm dying or something. Yeah. And the ref's trying to get Yokozuna off, and Yokozuna's just, he's got his arms crossed, he's just sitting there like, fuck off, bro. I don't know what the guy did, I have no idea. Apparently, this was out of character. Dave has talked about this, apparently uh, Mr. Dubiel here was disrespectful to Mr. Fuji backstage. Well, he learned a fucking lesson. Did you find out if he ever wrestled again, Sean? <laughs> that's, your, uh, that's your goal. Yes, let me look that up real yes. quick. I'm well, I, I, your, uh, there's a, I did a, a, Twitter, uh, a Twitter search. Our uh, noted wrestling journalist David Bixenspan investigated this a few years back and found that not, they did wrestle again. Not only did Dubio wrestle again, he wrestled Yokozuna again. Okay. And the next time, Yoko's finish was the Yurnagi. Excellent. He said, I will work with the sumo champion, but you are not hitting me that bonsai splash again. No way. I can't, I can't believe you. This seen guy this. doesn't get to call the fucking shots. I could, he could pack up his gear and go home. Uh, fine. Beat it, bro. Well, that's what happened. Yokozuna's calling the shots here, buddy. Yeah. This actually makes it into the opening of Monday Night Raw. I don't believe, I can't believe you haven't seen this. I just wasn't paying attention, I guess. I just, but, but, but yeah. So, uh, that was horrifying. That was legitimately yeah. horrifying. <laughs> Here's a clip of Superstars. It's- so, hang on. Dubio did, in fact, uh, wrestle some more in, with the WWF as well. And I, w- I will say, actually, in Yokozuna's defense, if you go back and look at that tape, his ankles do touch for like maybe half a second on the ground when he's coming down. So there it's a very brief like stoppage of motion that isn't complete. But uh he does um he does sit on his chest for a very long time. But yes. He It's actually almost his neck. Yeah. Yeah. Like he slid down his chest like a slide and crushed his neck. Yeah, this is brutal, dude. This is brutal. Granny, let's do the wrestling report. What do you got today? Put your laughing gear on. <laughs> My laughing gear. <laughs> <laughs> what is uh, wrestle a load? <laughs> <laughs> and Brian Hawks. I, I don't. That's what Vinnie got paid after his show. I don't. I don't know what wrestle load is. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, wait a minute. It's Russell Cade. Oh, oh well, that makes good. more sense. Where'd Brian go? <laughs> he's recuperating. He's, he's broken. You broke him, Granny. <laughs> Sheesh. I have right. never... I have... If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.